Hey everyone, welcome back. The next installment of Dub Drink Up, Burn Down, Paul Horn, Steve Kwan, Chad and Ronnie. Today, another fantastic discussion. We got some rum straight from Jamaica from my trip when I was there for Katie and Andy's wedding in, in December. Awesome, we have another delicious cigar. We're gonna talk, right, where that's coming from a wedding, we're gonna talk about destination weddings. Pros, cons, the bachelor parties, and all that kind of stuff that goes into it. But before we get into all that, guys, well, I was going to say that uh, uh, while we're on topic, <laughs> it's because Chad is having a destination wedding and his bachelor party, so it's it, it's it's going to be awesome. Perfect. We're just tying all this kind of stuff, man. We'll do an yep. episode from Cabo. That's where my wedding will be in May of 2022. So before we get into all that fun stuff, guys, let's talk about the cigar real quick. What are we smoking? Because I have been jonesing to light that thing up. I yeah. already clipped mine. It's ready to go. So this was highly recommended. Uh, this is the first time I'm trying this as well. It's the 20th anniversary Rocky Patel, and um, it's 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 a great blend. I hear they have really perfected their 20th anniversary. I hear that it's better than their 15th. We're going to be the None judge of, of that today. No, yeah, we never tried it. I mean, and their decade was a really good one. That's yeah. that's kind of their standard bearer for most people. And right. I still enjoy a decade. But this is a Nicaraguan and Honduran blend. Uh, the long fillers come from those regions. It's also cased in with a nice Honduran wrapper. So I hear that this is in the scale of the medium. So it's not too uh, bold and it's not too light. That's Normally, cool. I'm not a big guy on the wrappers and all that stuff, but this thing's kind it's of like, pretty. It looks, it, looks cool. it looks great, dude. Oh, yeah. the presentation is amazing. Yeah, the black and the gold and the, it's, it's nicely done. Like that thing up, man. All right, all right. So then, what are we gonna drink today, right? So the drink today we're showcasing, like I said, because we were in Jamaica, Appleton Estate 12 year rum, right? So this is a rare cask. It's gonna be delicious. I'm guessing. I haven't actually tasted this thing yet because I just bought it in Jamaica and said, hey guys, we need to put this on the show and have our first taste. So I think we're all rum people. Like Paul's a really big rum person, like as you've learned. So and I think I think Paul's actually had this before. I've though. had this before, yeah. No, this is a great one, especially at the price point. It's around 40 45 a pop. Um, it's this one, Mount Gay, and Florida de Cana are kind of, like, I think, the best in that sort of price range. Okay, so what, what's some of the tasting notes that, that you got from it? Since you've had it, I, have, I can't tell you. I would go with more kind of orange peel, vanilla. Okay. And sir, definitely the oak. These are done the oak. Is it supposed to be here. smooth, creamy? Like, what am I supposed to get out of this thing? Pretty smooth. Okay. And it's definitely yeah. creamy. I just had a sip. It's amazing. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's very Salute, pretty. Yeah. Salute. Prost. I like new things, right? Prost. New cigar and a new rum. Same episode. Fantastic. Absolutely. Wow, this is really good. So, have you been to Destination Wedding? Since that's, that's yes. the topic. You been? Have you been to Destination? This will be my first one. It's going to be in, in May, Cabo. 2022, fantastic. So Paul's first try, all-inclusive resort, Hyatt Ziva, Los Cabos. It's going to be fantastic. So what do you love about Destination Weddings, Quan? Juan? Well, number one. Quan. Oh, Quan. <laughs> wow, I know, right? Like, I mean, we, we do have a little Juan that's going to be there, too, actually. Yeah, I know. That's, that's <laughs> What's what up, I, Lopez? What I thought I Juan. heard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Destination Weddings because it's not boring. Um, also, the wedding that we're going to go to yours happens to fall on the same weekend-ish with my anniversary. So we're kind of, you know, molding those two together. But more importantly, there's so much to do in a destination wedding, especially when you talk about all-inclusive, right? Where the food, the drinks are included. You don't have to worry about things because all the activity and most activity should be within the facility, which I hear is going to be awesome. Yep. And so... That's what I love about destination wedding is that there's other things that you can do and it's not so much dress up, be proper, have certain things in schedule because you're there for a certain amount of time where you can finish a lot of your checklist, right? And But I think destination wedding for me is also about the location. That's important. Yep. And for us, we've always talked about where we like the vacation for me. It's always been beach combing yep so i love the fact That's that us, you're man. right there on the beach my man dude we've been my looking man. forward to it man so cabo are you getting are you wearing flip-flops in your wedding no there's only one rule on the wedding day for all guests no shoes no flip-flops no sneakers no nothing no I, I, shoes I'm i don't care what you wear i don't care how well dressed you are i will be in a suit 
probably a vest no jacket that's still debatable but at the end of the day like you could be in a t-shirt you could be in a hawaiian shirt we don't we don't care what you wear no shoes only roll how about like beach socks i said no shoes you can wear whatever kind of socks you want but to be technical... You might as well have Birkenstocks at that point, dude. Yeah, that's just kind of weird. All right, guys. Yeah. So when I was a kid, right? <laughs> okay? I was traumatized because uh, I think I was like seven, and I couldn't wait to get to the beach. I took off my shoes, and I ran, and I stepped in glass. And ever since then, because it did not heal for like six months, I mean, it was right there where my skin bent, you know, and it was mm-hmm. right there on the arc. Uh, yeah, sorry, dude. No dice. <laughs> the, the only exception is more elderly people that need extra support because bare feet provides no support. You know, I must am be getting up there. You a grandfather. I am getting up there in age. <laughs> You're not that old yet, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> so, pros and cons, guys. So I know Paul hasn't got to do it yet. So he's only going to experience the con from this one, to be completely fair, right? Because there's so, there's both pros and cons, right? The, well, so I, I'm excited. You know, one of the things that I've heard about it, the, the best thing is. Those that go are truly going to be those that you want there. Because, For the most part, yeah. Because it's, it's a big ask of your guests to, to come to something like that, but it's also a great opportunity for everyone to have a life, you know, memory of a lifetime. For sure. You know, like when me and my wife got married, we talked about doing the destination wedding. Um, it wasn't quite in our uh, thing, so what we ended up doing was doing a yacht here in Newport Beach. Just stayed in the yacht for four hours, went around the bay. But the nice thing there is everybody came, everybody got together. We had a lot of control because once you're on the boat, you can't leave. You're kind of yep. a hostage. Yep. And then after the four hours, everybody goes on their way and we do our thing. Yep. So, you know, it was nice, but I'm really excited to really excited to see the opportunity. I think we're good. Yeah, so I say that, like, that leads into one of the cons, right? So one of the cons is that for your guests, it's a lot more expensive wedding, right? Because it's not just, they're just not showing up to a venue, buying some gift, and like it's all included because, you know, the couple and the families are paying for the wedding. So this is, it's a vacation, right? It's like a three-day commitment minimum. I think most people are coming for at least four or five days, but it is not a cheap proposition for guests to show up. The flip side of that is for for the wedding couple, it's easier. Cheap right? asses. It tr- traditionally, <laughs> is not as expensive. It's actually going to be just as expensive. Like, not quite, like, it's not a California wedding expense, but we, what we've learned, we're not actually saving that much money because of the style. I'll get into that in a minute. But it's more so that, you know, we don't have to think of it of as many things, right? The resort takes care of most, thing, most things. You don't need to think about dinner. You don't need to think about the open bar because everybody's all inclusive. So food and drink are included. So we don't need to think about any of that. It's unless, so much cheaper, Except Chad. that we want to have it a bar. It is so much cheaper. So if we were to do this wedding in California, the exact way we're going to do it, it'd cost 100 grand. And how much and is it going to cost us like 15 to 20 grand. That's a lot cheaper. Correct. But when we went <laughs> into it, we're like, okay, so... We're going to end up probably saying like 10 or 15 grand. grand. It's just the guests are going to be putting the bill instead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> quite, a, quite a bit. Of, but it's also a three to four day like vacation. No, I, I so, you know, like, you know, that's kind of the, like the pro and the con for me is I have two young kids and I don't you have. You made it child friendly for all the people with kids. I think they, there's only one did. kid so far coming. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had a, me and my wife haven't been on vacation by ourselves in like seven years. So of course the kids are staying, but this means. My babysitter for the kids is in Phoenix. So I'm going to be driving to Phoenix, flying out of Phoenix, flying, oh, nice. flying, doing our thing, flying back to Phoenix, and then driving back. picking up the kids and driving back. That's fair. But it's going to be worth it because it's the pro and the con, right? The con is I have to go to Phoenix to Correct. get a babysitter, but the pro is I get the first vacation with my wife in seven years. So. Oh, and you're going to love it, man. So yeah. like the best thing about this resort, we're talking, there's like five restaurants, different type of food, right? There's... There's rooms that you walk out your door and you're basically already in the pool to your loungers and you hop over a little wall and you're in the main pool, right at the pool bar, beach cabanas, excursions, like it's like the whole nine yards, man. It's fantastic. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun. It is. That's what I said, we were just in Jamaica for a different destination wedding, right? Kitty and Andy, love you guys. And honestly, man, that, it was just so fun. Like almost 70 people, right? On the beach for the wedding there too. Like reception, all of that right around sunset. like. You just can't beat it. Like, sand is the dance floor. Like, how do you go wrong with that? You can't. You get shot. You can't. And we were there for four days. Beach cabanas. Like, we came back. And that was December. Coming back to California, it was actually hard because it was, like, the coldest day in Southern California. <laughs> you came that back same with day, all the rain. And it was raining. <laughs> uh, we were so pissed. Like, to leave 80 degrees and sunny, warm water on the beach <laughs> in Jamaica to, like, a cold California, it was that was a hard one. 
So let's stop talking about weddings and let's get to the nitty gritty, which is the bachelor party. Ooh. So we allowed Chad, the groom, of course, <laughs> to pick his destination, and he said Vegas, and I was like, interesting, but cool, interesting. Uh, Vegas, as you know, became very, very expensive. Everything you do, but it's the playground for adults, for sure. It and is, but like, get into to why, right? We're already doing destination wedding, right? So I can't say, Let, let's go to Bali or Cancun. Like, we're doing Cabo for the wedding, right? You say, for our honeymoon, we're planning to go to, one, like, the overwater huts, right? So another beach scene. So, like, dude, we can take a bachelor party. Like, let's go to the adult playground. Like, I love Vegas. I still go. I love throwing dice on the crabs table. Black Smoke Jack, a cigar, pull like, side. It's exactly like how are you gonna beat that? Right, and these guys organize a, like a twelve person suite. Oh yeah, at Three city center, suite, like in the heart table, of the strip, rooftop, rooftop pool, pool rooftop table, pool, all the yeah. fun stuff. Like, God, it's gonna be a good time, man. Absolutely, golf. it's not a bad way to do it. And it's we're gonna not go. Not a bad day to do it. Not a bad way to do it. <laughs> I will tell you too is that the organized um, aspect of it. You know, your brother. I'm helping out a little bit. Uh, we put our, you know, what to do and where we want to stay and all the pictures. And we, of course, razz him all in a WhatsApp. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm chat. not having a bachelor party. I'm having a bachelorette party, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the guys are so Kim's having much a bachelor fun. party. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, the, I think the Vegas thing is going to be so much fun. And it's just a preview of what's going to happen for your wedding. And I believe that a lot of things that we're going to do there's going to be talked about in your wedding. So, for instance, I told Chad that it's going to get so rowdy. And we're a bunch of old guys, by the way. You know, we're not, like, in our 20s or anything like that. I don't think there's this anyone in our 20s. This is a, a so, mid to late 30s up to 50s bachelor party. 50s? Who's 50s? <laughs> You're about to be. <laughs> wow. I'm like, wait a minute. Is somebody older than me? And you want to add up my comment earlier. <laughs> All right. These guys are jerks. <laughs> so I told him, I said, hey, you might want to up your... Healthcare insurance, right? <laughs> like maybe you're a dental bill. Black eyes and a missing tooth. Yeah, maybe a tattoo removal kind of insurance. I don't know, but it's going to be very epic, for mm. sure. <laughs> I like it. What do you guys think about the cigar? So far. And how's it pace, How's it pairing with the rum? So it's far, good. so good. Okay, so I love the rum. And <clears throat> did you recommend mm -hmm. this, Paul? Okay, because how did you know about this rum? I don't was, like rum. That's why I'm asking. Oh, I love rum, and this was on the shelf when I went to go buy. I was like, "Hold on, what's the best one on the shelf right here in the, the gift shop I was in?" That was the best one. I said, "Okay, done." So there was that bottle, and then a few Cubans. You guys saw the Cubans yep. when we wrapped gifts. That was that was the entirety of the gift shop purchase, other than like some like jerk chicken seasoning. Nice. So yeah. so, yeah. I'm sorry. Just to just to finish off yeah. what I was gonna say, this gives me a great sort of um you know like thought of cognac for some reason it tastes it is actually it is kind of smooth like cognac it's yeah. sweet. It, it, it is right i mean yeah. it gives me that sort of hint and you know I'm, I'm sitting here thinking i'm drinking cognac so that's why i was saying that this kind of like warms so you up it, going it's down. interesting because um the jamaican rums if you have other jamaican rums they're a little more funky i guess is the best word i could use to describe them they're kind of an acquired taste to some degree um, and some rum connoisseurs aren't a big fan of Appleton because it's not doesn't have that same funkiness to it. It's kind of more mainstream. Yep. But I think if you're looking for an entry rum or if you're someone that, like you said, that doesn't drink rum a lot, this is one of the best go-tos. It has that kind of sweeter taste. It's more mellow. If you're going to drink rum, you have to spend about 40 bucks. You can get a good bourbon for like $20. Yep. But if you're going to get rum, I really think you have to step up to that 35 45 range. Otherwise, it's just not worth the money if you're going to drink it like yeah. we are neat, at least. Yep, absolutely. Speaking of price range, um, you can pick one of these sticks up for about $16, $14 to $16, depending on where you get it from. And, of course, if you buy it by the box, you obviously get the, the quantity discount, and that brings it all the way down to like $13 per stick. Like Rocket Patel just makes good smokes. Rocket Patel is stepping it up. Good job, guys. I mean, you're... Your, your quality control is amazing, but also just the way that they're blending things, I think just uh, really hits my palate well. I will tell you also that it has a little spice to it, not overwhelming. But I'm not getting spice on it. 
Different flavor palettes, man. Oh, 100%. Different flavor palettes. That's that's the fun thing. Like, we joked around, like, you know, talking about the rum beforehand. Like, when you read some of the reviews and stuff, it's just people make stuff up. Like, one person just said digestive biscuits to describe Appleton rum. <laughs> <laughs> digestive biscuits? Like, what is like, that? What the hell is that? <laughs> I'm not English. Like, what the heck? Pepto Bismo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Fair. All right, guys. Let's call this one. What do you say? Sounds good. Salud. Salud. Have your cocktail. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Next installment. See you in a couple weeks. Drink up. Burn Burn down. down. girls this one this is a video oh look at that smoke come out all right smoke it now smoke it i'm still trying to figure out how to do it i'm telling you